Hello everyone! It has been, what, two weeks since I've done my last book review? Working two jobs kind of takes a lot of my time. And of course trying to write my own books and, you know, all that fun stuff. Then trying to keep the schedule on that one, that tends to take some time too. But I did manage to actually read Into Twilight by P.R. Adams. Let's get into the review. So, plot. Basically, the book follows the main character, Stefan Mendoza. Uh, pretty much right off the hop, he is double-crossed, left for dead, tortured in ways that no one really should ever get tortured. Yeah, it, 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 it's pretty graphic in a lot of places. And that's the first two chapters. First two chapters. Setting the tone pretty real graphically there. Uh, <clears throat> Stefan is then eventually found, uh, rebuilt, given a whole bunch of robot parts, and is then given a task of, of killing a, a U.S. Senator. Stefan, understandably pissed right the hell off uh, of his, about his uh, situation, kind of really wants revenge on the people who left him behind. And left him for dead and all that. Especially a certain person named Stovall, who was basically his operative manager, in in a way. So anyway, throughout the book, Stefan is trying to figure out why these people want this senator killed. Uh, there's that whole complication of the senator needs to be killed in a way that looks like an accident or something natural. Which is especially difficult because she's kind of a healthy person. And piece by piece, Stefan starts to piece together what is going on. And there's a whole other subplot as well with a couple of assassins that also are trying to take down the senator. And yeah. All in all, when it comes to plot, well, it's nothing that I haven't seen before. It's definitely a good plot in its own ways. Like, there was at no point in the plot where I didn't care what was going on. I always wanted to know what was going to happen next. Which is really a testament to doing a similar style plot to many other stories out there, but doing it in such a different way that it keeps the reader interested. And it kept me interested all the way through it. So for plot, four stars. Very well executed. Just loses a point due to the sake that I've seen the re I've seen revenge stories. I've seen the you gotta kill this person story many many times. It's not that it's bad. I've just seen it before. But I mean, all in all, four stars is pretty damn good. All right, characters. This book has one hell of an ensemble of characters. I mean, it's not Lord of the Rings or a Song of Ice and Fire big, but it's bigger than some of the ensembles that I myself have written or even read. So, I'm going to go over some of the more main characters, especially uh, Stefan's posse, and just who they are and stuff like that. And I'm also going to go over, like, the target and just a few of the other leads, leads and sides that, that, that go into the book. So, first off, I want to talk about Itchy. She is an interesting character. She is the daughter of Stefan's best friend who died when they were double-crossed. Now, she wants to be with Stefan uh, in a very business sort of way. Uh, she wants to be a part of his world, a part of his life, as basically an, an assassin. And of all the characters there, she actually almost seems the most qualified to be an assassin. She is cold. She has no problem with the thoughts of killing. She has zero qualms about anything that they have to do. And she is probably one of the more business-minded of all of them. She wants the job done, and she wants it done, like, now. Because the longer things go, go on, she seems to just understand that it gets more complicated. Uh, Stefan's best friend, Danny was the only surviving member of his original crew. And he's, in the book, 
I don't really have much of an opinion of the character because he doesn't really have much of a role to play. I mean, he's basically the drone guy. He's the guy who runs surveillance in, without the use of the grid. Um, yeah, he was just c kind of there. Good character, but not the focus in, in pretty much the majority of the scenes. Uh, you have Chan, their grid hound. Interesting character, definitely has a past. I would like to know more about Chan than what was presented in the book. And don't get me wrong, there was a lot about Chan presented in the book. But Chan, yeah, there's not really much I can say about her without giving things away. So I'm just going to move on to Jillian, the love interest of the book. And... I didn't really care much for this character. Um, it's not that she was written poorly or anything like that. Just, I just found I didn't care. Uh, mostly, mostly due to the sake that whenever her and Stefan are in the same scenes together, all I can think is, Stefan, you're a moron. And with that, we'll get to, to, to the main lead, Stefan Mendoza. <sighs> he's not a bad character. He was one that I had a hard time really sympathizing or uh, getting to relate to early on in the book because he is a, he is an assassin. He kills people. And that's just what he does. He's very good at what he does. Now, throughout the book... Stefan just seemed very, very hell-bent and determined to disprove that he is very good at being an assassin. Don't get me wrong. He is excellent at gathering data. He is very good at knowing what pieces seem to be important and what, and what pieces to just kind of shove off to the side till later. But he tended to get his emotions uh, up in the way. And there is a reason for that. There definitely is a reason for it. And it does get into it at the very end of the book. But at the same time, I'm just watching and re I'm reading this and going, Stefan, what are you doing? Uh, it, I don't know. It just seemed out of character for, for who he was. And like I said, it gets into it. Which kind of kind of washes things away in its own right, but at the same time, it kind of doesn't. Um, it definitely made him a little bit more dynamic than what he would have been if he was just a straight-up assassin, so definitely some props there. Um, but all in all, characterization, five stars. I was actually really, really impressed. All the characters definitely had their own voice. They all spoke in their own different ways. They all acted in their own different ways. So, despite whatever gripes I may, I may have with Stefan being a bit of an idiot, despite the sake that it does get explained, I cannot stress that enough, it does get explained. It was just something that irked me as I was reading it. But yeah, uh, characterization, five stars. Full on. Part three, writing. This book is excellently written. Like... Just phenomenal. The scene settings are impeccable. The characterization is amazing. Uh, the story itself is very, very well thought out. This, like, straight up, five out of five for writing. There's nothing else I can say. It's just that good of writing. Number four, imagination. Now, I know for the Candlestick Dragon one, I put feel for it. Um, I just don't think that's going to work as well for the majority of the books that I'm going to do. So I'm going to actually do Imagination for uh, this review onward. So, Imagination. Holy shit. This guy knows his stuff. This guy knows what he's talking about when it comes to politics and business and all that stuff. I mean, it's a cyberpunk book. Uh, 
and while it doesn't really add a whole lot to the cyberpunk genre in and of itself, most cyberpunk stuff doesn't really add much to the cyberpunk genre. The sake that something is in the cyberpunk genre and written well is enough for me. Um, a lot of the imagination actually comes out in terms of what Stefan does, what goes on in the plot, the surprises that it actually presents, and the sake that it's actually almost hard to see it coming but when you piece it together it makes a whole lot of sense and yeah in terms of imagination i'm I, i'm giving this one another five it was very imaginative in its own way which definitely it, it made me happy to read i definitely enjoyed seeing just what was going on in this guy's, in this guy's head while he was writing things and now, the ending. I'm not going to lie. The ending, it was rushed. It was very, very quick. Like, you definitely still had all the scene setting that P.R. Adams has definitely shown to be very proficient at throughout the majority of this book. Out throughout the entirety of the book. But it seemed like you got this massive, slow burn and... Piece by piece, you're getting these little bits of information and trying to piece things together, and then just all of a sudden, bang, 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 done. Uh, this is what happens to the assassin. Oh, this is the mole. This is what happens after that. This is what Stefan's doing, and then it's just done. And it takes place over the course of three to four chapters, which, don't get me wrong, not bad, but... It definitely just seemed fast. It seemed like it just happened too quickly. Stefan didn't really piece a lot of this stuff together. Like, the assassin stuff, yeah, he pieced that one together. But he didn't figure out who the mole was. And I think it would have been a little bit more compelling if he had figured out the mole, but didn't actually tell us who it was. And then sprung the trap on the mole. But that's just my thought on it. The ending in and of itself was not awful. It was very well written. It made a whole lot of sense and it tied a lot of those loose ends together. So while it was fast, it definitely did a very good job of presenting the world and presenting the problems that Stefan and the characters have been facing throughout the entirety of the book itself. So uh, for it being fast, it loses a point, but all in all, Four points. Four stars. So, all in all, this book is very, very good. I definitely enjoyed it. And the saying that it took me two to three weeks to read it is not in reflection of the book itself, but more of my own limited time. Um, I hope to get through these other books a hell of a lot quicker. I don't know. We'll see how things go. We'll see where my writing timeline goes. We'll see where my work timelines are at and so on and so forth. But anyway, all in all, this book gets a solid 9 out of 10. Very, very good book. I, I enjoyed it fully and I will be picking up books 2 and 3 for this trilogy because I want to know what happens. I want to know just how Stefan figures everything out and gets through things because... What was holding him back is now gone. So I think I'm going to have an easier time connecting with Stefan now and not screaming at the book, you idiot. Uh, but, yeah. I'm Quinn W. Buckland. If you would like me to review your book, let me know in the comments below. Um, I will also have my email down there, so feel free to email me if you want me to uh, do your book. Um... This guy actually contacted me, if I'm right, it was actually because of a previous review, and he himself emailed me. He sent me a copy of his book, and here we are. So, yeah. Every review that I agree to, I will do. Sometimes it'll take me a little longer than I'd like, but I will do them. Every single one of... Every book that somebody sends me, I will do, so... And it doesn't matter genre. What matters to me is good plot, good characterization, good writing, a decent amount of, imagin of imagination, and a strong ending. 
other than that, you, your book can be about almost literally anything. And I will very likely enjoy it or at least give it my honest review. So, yeah. Have a good one, everybody.